uh, today, I want to go over, I want to talk about AI stuff, AI prompts, how to use AI to come up with content. Now we've gone over um, like how to use AI for things like this in the past, but I just actually got off of a coaching call of my own um, and I got some new AI prompts for everybody and then how to actually use these. So we'll go, we'll just, I'll share my screen. We'll kind of just mess around. We'll explore some of these prompts. We'll plug them in. We'll see what the output is and then how we can use, uh, use those responses. I will have a Google Doc SOP inside the school group. Uh, if not by the end of the day, if not by the end of the day today, then uh, end of the uh, end of the day tomorrow. So <laughs> um, now we should be using AI to come up with like inspiration and ideas and to to help us write content. I've always kind of taken the stance I would not want to rely on and lean on AI to just write all of my content. There's a lot of reasons why. Number one, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of actually practicing that skill to become a better copywriter. Um, it is arguably one of the most valuable skills you could possibly have. And the only way to get good at copywriting is extreme amounts of volume. It's just writing a lot of content, putting it out there, reflecting on it. How do people engage? Awesome. Let me tweet this. That's the only way people can do it. You cannot, there's no shortcut. There's no real like secret trick hack. AI will make it easier, but it shouldn't replace learning that skill. Now, the other, uh, the other thing, um, the other thing about the AI, uh, using AI to write content is if it sucks, like if it's just not good content, Google is going to read it and it's going to know that it's AI and it's going to dock you points. So a lot of times you're writing content, like if you're writing LinkedIn articles or you're doing some sort of SEO blogs, if you're having AI write it and it's just bad content, it will actually have the inverse effect. So if we're writing blogs and content to increase SEO, to increase our attention on the internet, get more people to see us. So we write a blog with the, the hopes that Google's just going to push it out to more people. But if it sucks and Google um, the text that is written by AI, it's going to shove it the other way. So just be careful. Uh, well, having said that, came across some pretty awesome prompts. Um, like I said, we'll have a Google Doc inside the school group. So feel free to just follow along. You can just type out all the prompts, everything. That's totally fine too. Um, so let's, let me just get my tabs right. And then we can just jump right in. Now, if you do not have a ChatGPT subscription, um, let's see. So I think I got ChatGPT. Oh yeah, it's right here. So ChatGPT are here, right here. So we could we can just start a new a new one. If you do not have a ChatGPT for the specifically the four, if you don't have the subscription, no worries. Um, I might try Google Gemini. And I'll just open up all these AIs. Uh, actually, here one sec. I'll just open up all these AIs so that we can uh, we can just play around with the different models and see what the outputs are like. Um, all right. So there's ChatGPT. Uh, another one is actually the best one you should use is Perplexity. You don't have to have an account with Perplexity. I would recommend just get an account. Actually, I. Am I logged in? I might not be logged in. Well, doesn't matter. Uh, it's free. It's a free account. As you can see, like I just kind of just jumped right into perplexity. There was no login. ChatGPT has that now too, but only for the 3.5. Perplexity uses uh, ChatGPT 4, ChatGPT 3.5. I don't think it uses Gemini. It does use Claude 3. Claude 3 is a specific writing AI. Um, so if OpenAI made ChatGPT, Google made Gemini, Anthropic made Claude 3. Uh, I think Perplexity is just made by Perplexity. So kind of kind of interesting. I would, I've been using Perplexity. I actually replaced Google Chrome as my browser and I my default is um, Perplexity. So something, something kind of interesting. Now, the first prompts um, are just going to be coming up with audience insights, uh, essentially market research. So this is why we talk about it all the time. We harp on this over and over and over and over. You got to understand, have some insights into who your ideal audience is. Um, so an example here, uh, a woman who is looking to lose 20 pounds, a man who is struggling to get new, well, here, I can just copy and paste all this in here so you guys can see along with me. So a woman who is looking to lose 20 pounds. 
that might be your ideal audience if you're a weight loss coach. A man who is struggling to get new clients for their insurance agency, that might be your ideal audience if you were a marketing agency. 55-year-old woman who's worried that she's not going to have enough money to retire comfortably, that might be your audience if you're an insurance agent. A 65-year-old woman who's uh, worried that her family isn't going to love her DIY crafts and projects that she has made. That might be your audience if you are a mindset coach. So uh, the more specific you can get about your audience, the better, almost always. Uh, if this is as far as you have right, you're, the, this ugh, this is as far as you, you have gotten right now, all good. We'll start with this. No problem at all. So the first question is that you need to ask yourself, who is your audience? The next one is what are their pain points and fears? I would just get examples. You can use ChatGPT, come up with some like negative uh, adjectives. Hopeless, frustrated, embarrassed, humiliated, ashamed, blah, 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 blah. Now the prompt here is write an emotional thousand word journey entry from the perspective of a man or woman who is, and then list all the pain points, he or she feels negative emotions from. So this is like the prompt. Uh, I've got some examples here. Write an emotional thousand word journey and journal entry from the perspective of a woman who is struggling to lose weight. She feels hopeless and frustrated. Hopeless and frustrated, those are the negative emotions. The pain point is she's struggling to lose weight. Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man who is struggling to get new clients for their insurance agency. He feels frustrated, hopeless, and ashamed. Be creative. Um, write in a thousand, write a thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a 55 year old man who is worried that he won't have enough money, uh, to ever retire. And he feels frustrated, ashamed, hopeless, be creative. These are example prompts of this. So the thought here is if we're trying to get really insightful, um, I don't know, information, basically do really deep market research on our ideal audience. How much more intimate could we get than a private journal entry? Nobody's like, hey, man, I wrote this journal entry. You want to read it? But like your private thoughts, like literally the inner dialogue, the words that you use, the beliefs that you hold over yourself, the way that you think you look to other people, all of that stuff, super intimate details, you would put that in a journal entry. Imagine if we could have access to that. Now we're getting really, really deep with this stuff. So because... Uh, we're pretty much all in insurance here. Let's just use this one. Let's just see what happens. Uh, so here, we're going to push it there, push it here, and we'll push it here. So they're all going to be essentially the same. Uh, it's They're all going to be a thousand words. They're all going to be really, really deep, uh, really, really specific, really, really emotional. It's important that we use the word emotional too. Uh, if this happens, usually just regenerate or just open up a new uh, a new chat. But let's just stick with perplexity because it, it looks like it finished here, which is pretty cool. Um, so April 10th, 2024. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. The constant rejection, the empty calendar, the dread of another day of fruitless prospecting is all becoming too much to bear. I feel like I'm drowning. And no matter how hard I try to stay afloat, the waves just keep crashing down on me. Now, I'm not going to read all through this, but I mean, do you know anybody that might relate to this stuff? All of our, we're constantly talking about like, right? Content that relates to people. We need to relate to people. Um, I think it's actually a pretty famous quote. I don't know who said it, but it basically, if you can explain to somebody their pain points and problems and like negative beliefs and all that stuff, if you can explain that in a better way or the exact way, that they explain it to themselves, you're good. Because now they're thinking, oh my God, this person's reading like direct or writing directly to me. This person's in my head. They're thinking the exact same things I am. Now there's some magic parts to this. So this is like, you know, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. The constant rejection, the empty calendar, another, you know, the dread. The first year was tough. I told myself the building and client base from scratch takes time. So I pounded the pavement, networked like crazy. I tried every marketing tactic in the book, slowly but surely. I started to gain a few clients here and there. I was elated, thinking I'd finally turn the corner. But then the second year hit and everything came crashing down. One by one, clients started leaving. So here's, here's a little magic right here. You have all of this. Here's the next prompt. Rewrite the entry, replace I with you. Now let's see how this takes a dramatic marketing spin. You don't know how much longer you can keep this up. 
the constant rejection, the empty calendar, the dread of another day of fruitless prospecting, it's all becoming too much to bear. You feel like you're drowning. No matter how hard you try to stay afloat, the waves just keep crashing down on you. Some of you guys might be thinking this like currently. I, I used to think this all the time when I was kind of first starting out online. So it's trippy. A, a journal entry like, hey, here's my ideal audience. Write a thousand word emotional, emotional journal entry. Now flip it to you, dude. All of this, like this is, we can come up with ad angles. There's headlines, there's email subject lines, e full emails in here that we can extract. Now we're going to get a lot deeper. We're going to get a lot deeper. This is just kind of, how it, it really kind of just gets you start to, to thinking, get you in the mind of your ideal prospect. Um, now I don't, I, so actually the next module that I'm, I'm actually, so like I'm going through like a course to like learn all of this stuff and then try to like, uh, I don't know, distill it and, and bring it out to you guys. Uh, but the next one that I'm going through is like intense content stuff. So I thought I was pretty good at like coming up, you know, like just through my trials and just experience in the past, I got something a lot deeper for you. So it'll be, I would, I would do this first, do these in steps. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to read through all of this, but we can start to see how literally you're in the mind of your prospect. And now you can start writing posts and content and emails that are, it's, it's, it's almost using the exact inner dialogue that they have. You wish you could just take a break, step away from it all and clear your head, but you can't not with the bills and the payroll and the ever looming threat of losing everything you've worked so hard for. You're trapped. The walls are closing in. Pretty impressive how this stuff really just that slight little twist turns this really, really like murky. Now we're going to get a little deeper. So here's the prompt. Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man or woman who is list all the pain points. Now focus on their observations about how the outside world looks at him or her and treats him or her because they blah, 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 blah. And how that makes them feel a negative emotion. Be creative. So I'm going to leave this prompt up here and then let's get, oh, here's one. I wrote out some examples right before this call. So write a thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a 55 year old man who is worried he won't ever be able to retire. Focus on his observations about how the outside world looks at him and treats him because he can't retire and how that makes him, how that makes him feel ashamed, humiliated, and scared. Be creative. Here's another one. Write a thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man who is struggling to get new clients for their insurance agency. Focus on his observations about how the outside world looks at him and treats him because his business is not successful and how that makes him feel worthless, embarrassed, and frustrated. Be creative. Let's use that one. Let's see what we get. I'm just going to stick with perplexity. Uh, I mean, if you have ChatGPT4, you know, try that one too. Gemini is pretty cool. Gemini, Gemini seems more almost more human, I suppose. I should have the self pity side, so I already wrote in first person, which oh, I get. Well, we didn't prompt it to write in second person there. <clears throat> I can't escape the feeling. So this is the prompt that, like, hey, focus on the man who's struggling to get new clients. Blah 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 blah. So I can't escape the feeling that everyone is looking at me with pity, like I'm some sort of failure. The way they glance at me when I walk into a room. The hushed whispers I catch as I pass by, it's all a constant reminder that my business is struggling, that I'm not living up to the expectation of those around me. It all started slowly at first, just a few odd looks, blah, 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 blah. My own family is the worst. They used to be so proud of me, so supportive of my decisions, but now every time I see them, it's the same old song and dance. Concerned looks, probing questions, how's the business doing? Not so subtle suggestions that maybe you should just give it up, go do something else. How many of us have been there? I know I have. This is really, really deep marketing uh, uh, audience market research uh, because at the end of the day, I'm not a failure. I'm a fighter, a dreamer, a man who's willing to put it all online and chase his passion no matter of blah, 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 blah. Here's the secret sauce. Rewrite the entry, replace I with you. Let's look at the marketing spin on this one. You can't escape the feeling that everyone is looking at you with pity and like you're some kind of failure. The way they glance at you when you walk into a room, your own family is the worst. They used to be so proud of you. Can you kind of see like how this will give you so much, uh, I guess, I don't want to say ammo, but options, I suppose, on on how to write your content. Now, we, we've get, we've gone through like a lot of different uh, content writing frameworks. You can plug this stuff into that. It's pretty cool. It's not just your family. Everywhere you go, you feel like you're being scrutinized, evaluated, found wanting. This would be great sales copy for a sales page. 
Or it'd be great in an email. If you're going to do a webinar and you're sending out an email to get people to register for the webinar, maybe you're using words like this. It's not just your family. Everywhere you go, you're being scrutinized, blah, 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 blah. In 30 minutes, I'm going to show you the three-step process and how to get, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now let's go a little bit, another, uh, a little bit deeper. Now we need like, um, I guess like content. Well, so like themes, subject, specifically themes, subject lines, um, and headlines. So what are 20 things that a man or woman who is list pain point might lay awake at night having anxiety about? And it's trippy. Like, man, it's like we go through this stuff. Like we are the human that like, you know, going through the day, like, oh, man, another day of fruitless prospecting. My family looks at me like I suck and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm laying there at night like, oh, my God, if I don't book enough calls, I can't make enough money and I can't do this. I can't hit that goal. Oh, my God. It's insane uh, how easy it is to just gloss over that and not talk to AI as if your AI is that person. I thought this was really, really profound stuff. So what are 20 things that a man or woman who has a list pain point might lay awake at night having anxiety about? What are 20 things uh, that a woman who's struggling to lose 20 pounds of fat might lay awake at night, lay awake at night having anxiety about? What are 20 things that a 55 year old man who is worried that he can't retire might lay awake at night thinking about? What are 20 things that a man who's struggling to grow his insurance agency might lay awake at night having anxiety about? Let's do that one. And we're gonna have a little spin on this one too. If this is helpful, guys, let me know. Uh, if it's not, also let me know so we can we can kind of change these things and tailor them to what you are looking for. <clears throat> um, the constant rejection and empty calendar from failed prospecting efforts. Is your, uh, is your calendar constantly empty from all of your failed prospecting efforts? Here are five different ways to blah, 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 blah. Having to dip into personal savings to keep the business afloat, blah, 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 blah. Here's the secret sauce. Rewrite the entries from a second person perspective. Watching his hard earned progress evaporate as clients continue to leave. So uh, doubting whether you have what it takes to succeed in the in this cutthroat insurance industry. Have you ever had to dip into your personal savings to keep your, your insurance agency afloat? The, uh, dwindling bank account, how you're gonna, I mean, this is all like, you could make a video about all of these. You can write an email, you can make a post about all of this. Now, almost everything we've been talking about has just been pain points, pain points, pain points, pain points, pain points, pain points. Now, I'm a big proponent as far as uh, like writing copy. Everybody talk to you, every book you have ever read, they're all going to say, like, talk about the pain points, harp on the pain points, harp on the pain points, stick them with a the knife and twist it and dig it or stick it a little bit deeper. That's cool. That's awesome. But the other part of that is when you're writing your content, you have to give hope. It's hope. Talk about the pain points all you want. But if you don't kind of wrap up the pain points with a nice like hope bow, I suppose, that person is going to leave that interaction feeling really bad because you just reminded them about all the bad things in their life. And then you didn't give them any other options. It's like an open loop. You got to close the loop. So are you stuck and you hate everything that you're doing? Here's three different ways to get unstuck and love every single moment of your day. Hope, right with hope. So what is the opposite of that? The positive. So a lot of these prompts, uh, we can spin them to talk about positive things. So positive adjectives. I would just get a list, just Google list of positive adjectives. Proud, confident, sexy, smart, accomplished, relieved, love, joyful, grateful, bold, courageous, satisfied, blah, 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 blah. So here's a prompt. Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man or woman who is struggling with the pain points, but now has achieved the goal. They feel dominant, positive emotion, be creative. So write a thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a woman who is struggling to lose 20 pounds, but now she has, she feels confident, proud, and sexy. Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man who's struggling to get clients for their insurance agency, agency, but now they figured it out. He feels confident, proud, and accomplished. Be creative. Let's do that one. All right, here's another one I wrote out just to just give you guys some, some thoughts. Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a 55 year old man who is worried that he wouldn't be able to retire, but now has enough money to retire comfortably. I got to add to that. He feels excited, refreshed, hopeful, and proud. Be creative. See what they come up with. 
I can hardly believe it. After years of struggle and constant rejections and self-doubt, I finally turned the corner. My insurance agency is thriving and I feel more confident and accomplished than ever. So this is this is like in marketing, this would kind of be similar to future pacing. It's a huge thing in sales calls. Um, like if you're selling ads and you're, I don't know, just talking about different like ROI and, and uh, like uh, how much cash is coming in from your ad spend. And you're asking people like, what would you do with an extra 20 grand? Like, if you made an extra hundred thousand dollars like tomorrow, like what would you what would you actually do with it? Getting them to think in that state of mind in the future, what could be? What are the possibilities? I'm hopeful that I can achieve this as long as your solution is clear, concise, and makes sense. All everything that we're talking about really is content, content, content. This is still market research. We're trying to get into the mind of our ideal prospects. What are the negatives and how do they think about it? What are the positives and how are they thinking about it? When we're talking about the negative stuff, we're giving them hope. We're talking about the new vehicle. We're throwing rocks at the enemies. When we're talking about the positive stuff, we're reminding them, hey, you're not failing because of you. Somebody just told you the wrong way. We're talking again about a new vehicle. Here's the new process. You've been stuck spinning your wheels with Facebook ads because you couldn't get them to work. Well, here's why they're not working. You just got to take this little box. You just got to change this little section. Nobody told you because nobody knows content, 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 and market research, they go hand in hand. They are essentially married to each other. Now, secret sauce, you know what's coming. Rewrite it, but replace I with you. You can hardly believe it. After years of struggle, constant rejection, and self-doubt, you finally turn the corner. Your insurance agency is thriving, and you feel more confident and accomplished than you ever have in a very long time. That would be a good intro for a video, talking about how to get there. Now, if you, you, know, you, you can hardly believe it. You after years of struggle and blah 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 blah. Now, if you are not there right now, keep watching. Blah blah blah. blah. I'm not a really good presenter, kind of off the top or off the cuff, but uh, I hope that kind of gets the point across. But you remember the countless nights you spent laying awake at night, staring at the ceiling, wondering if you made the biggest mistake of your life. You can talk about these things in first person as a way to relate to your ideal audience, S especially if you've been there. Now, I would never lie to anybody. I always like be trans a huge proponent of transparency. And, and just being trustworthy, that will take you further than you will ever believe it. It is insane. Um, I was going to say, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more like transparent, maybe almost to a fault, but I'm trying to think. I don't think it's ever been ever been a bad thing. Like, it's tr so transparent to the point where we're talking to a, a client that's paid us money, and it's like, ah, oh, dude, like, you should go this direction. And then they stop paying us, and they go that direction. But then they end up, like, doing really, really well in a completely different industry. So... It works out for them, which is great. That's always the point. How can we help people? That's that's the goal. Um, so now again, like we're getting into the we're we're getting we're 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 walking in the shoes of the person that was struggling with this thing. They had a goal, they had a hiccup. This is where they're at. What's a big problem that you had? What are the steps that you used to get past it? How are you better now because of it? This is the content that you can plug into that framework. Here's another one. It's basically like, I mean, it's it's basically the exact same prompts. It's just the opposite of them, like the, the positive spin. <laughs> Write an emotional thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man or woman who has listed all the pain points, but now achieve their goal. Focus on his or her observations about how the outside world looks at him or her, treats him or her because he or she has achieved the desired outcome and how that makes them feel from a positive emotion. Write a thousand word a th man. I keep saying that wrong. Write a thousand word journal entry from the perspective of a man who is struggling to get new insurance agency clients, but now has it figured out. Focus on his observations. Uh, focus on his uh, or focus on his expectations about how the outside world. No, 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 that's wrong. Come on, Grammarly. Observations about how the outside world looks at him and treats him because he's now making a great income as a thriving insurance agency and how that makes him feel. Confident, proud, and accomplished, be creative. Let's see. Gone are the days of pity, condensation, condensation, Cond condescension. Interesting. I don't think I've ever said that word. Condescension. It's been a long arduous. Yeah. So yeah, if you don't, boom. Um, there's other prompts to get ChatGPT to stop talking kind of like medieval like this. 
Uh, the struggles and setbacks I've faced in the past now seem like distant memories. Do you want to be in a position where you're seeing the struggles and setbacks you used to face in the past, and now they just seem like distant memories, overshadowed by tangible success? This is awesome, awesome, awesome market research. Then there are the clients. Oh, the clients. They used to look at me with mis mixture of skepticism and hesitation. Now, I, you know, this, like I said, market research, this is not something I would just copy and paste and post anywhere. I would use this as ways to come up with ideas and inspiration. And here's more secret sauce. Replace I with you. It's all so satisfying for you to witness. Gone are the days of pity and condescension. But oh wait, now the tables have turned. When you enter a room, heads turn, eyes follow your every move, your gears turning in their minds as they try to reconcile the confident and successful businessman standing before them. Blah, blah, blah. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. These are all good angles for writing ads, ad copy. Usually when we're writing ad copy, we want to have like four to five, so this, well, I guess three to five, different ad angles. So one angle could be like one of the first, well, this this could be actually right here. One angle is your ideal client's observations about how the outside world looks at him and treats him because maybe the negative side. Another angle is maybe the positive side. Those are two different angles. So if you're writing Facebook ads, so you'd have like three to five angles and then three to five pieces of copy per angle. So when you're testing everything, you've got a ton of copy that you can test left and right all day long. No problem at all. Uh, combine that copy. I don't know if I'd use ChatGPT. Well, maybe. I mean, if you, ChatGPT, if you've got the ChatGPT 4, it'll come up with images and stuff for you. Um, but I would have a lot of creatives, a lot of creatives with a lot of copy. To be like really good with Facebook ads, depending on the, the particular strategy, um, it's usually just big volume. Right? Have a lot of things stockpiled so that you can test super, super, super fast. The faster you can test, the faster you can get positive results, the faster you can make changes, the faster you're going to get to success. The big problem is people really underestimate that. Um, like when I say like we had three to five ad angles and then three to five different pieces of copy per ad angle and three to five different headlines per piece of copy per angle and three to five images per copy. It was just per copy. So basically like one ad would have uh, three to five different images. So like one campaign to five audiences could have, I mean, we could be running like 30 different ads all off of one angle. And then on the next angle, so we had, we had huge numbers. I mean, the Google drives are like completely packed and full just with copy, headlines, angles, and images. Um, yeah, uh, most people underestimate the volume required to be really successful. If you're gonna do it with uh, video ads, you just have to have a lot of videos stockpiled, lots and lots and lots. You can use, um, these different prompts to help you come up with scripts. And in fact, I've got one. We're going to run into that here in a minute. Um, I'm still I'm still going through that uh, part of the course, but I'll, I mean, I'll just share what I got so far. <clears throat> um, all right. So did we already put the secret sauce on this one where we replace yeah, you with I? Awesome. Here's another one. This one. I like this one a lot. What are the 20 things the man or woman who... Uh, was whatever their pain point is, but now has a dream outcome might say is their favorite part about achieving their goal. What are 20 things that a woman who is struggling to lose 20 pounds, but now has lost the weight might say her favorite parts of achieving her goal was, is, whatever. Uh, what are 20 things that a man who was struggling to get new clients for their insurance agency but now has figured it out and gets new clients every single week, uh, might say his favorite part of figuring out the process to get new clients was. Sees that one. Let's just see what it what it comes up with. discovering the power of using insurance virtual assistance to handle prospecting, cold calling. Yep, using VAs, good call there. Implementing a robust digital marketing strategy, including SEO, social media, and target advertising. Leveraging my existing client relationship to get referrals. This is all great, great stuff. 
investing in sales trainings, learning effective techniques for building rapport, analyze lead sources and conversion rates to identify profitable channels. Like these are all things that, that like we could all be doing. Cultivating strategic partnerships. We have that specifically as a, I think it's actually a hundred thousand dollar an hour task on the time audit sheet. Embracing consultative sales approach. Dude, most people approach like a, I'm the best. And if you don't buy from me, you're a freaking idiot. That's how most people approach their sales. They're, they're going into a sales call. Like I need to get something out of this. And on top, if you, if you add on some people cash a little tight, some people are kind of like, oh, dude, I need to get this sale. That comes off. It's like so obvious. It comes off to the other person. So if you approach it from a consultative sales approach, like I can help this person. I am super confident. Like me personally, Joe, I'm, super confident i can help pretty much any anybody with whatever their business problem is i'm pretty confident that i can do that and i'm pretty confident that i can do that because i know i'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions i'm going to see okay what have you tried what is your goal what's your hiccup or what's your goal where are you at what's your hiccup what have you tried and then there's another process i'm only super confident about that because i have a pretty large volume of experience helping a lot of people in a lot of different strategies be successful with those strategies. So like when I go into a sales call, like I don't even, in my mind, it's, it's more of a coaching call. Like I couldn't care less if you join us or not. Like we, this, I don't know how to say this from a non-egotistical perspective, but I'll try to like back it up, I suppose, or come full circle. I couldn't care less if somebody comes into our program and pays us or if they don't. Because I know that the people, as long as we just stay neutral, stay, keep plowing forward, we will inevitably attract the people that like our style, like what we're talking about, like what we're, what we're teaching, and they're going to come on board. So everybody that I talk to, I couldn't care less if you pay us. Like, it doesn't even matter to me at, at all, because I'll tell you a bunch of things, and I know knowing is not doing. I know most people need help with the implementation. You could know all of this stuff. Like, well, I'll give you all of these prompts. But if you don't use these prompts to come up with content and audience insight research, then it doesn't matter. When you do pay us, then we're holding your hand. Like we're with you through this process. Check it in. Hey, man, did you get that done? Like we talked about last week. Just want to know, are we moving forward with this or what's up? Consultative sales approach. You can pretty much help everybody. You, you, you have the ability to, but you can't help everybody. We can't want it more than you. You can't want like financial peace of mind more than the person that you're talking to consultative sales approach. And when you go in completely unbiased, I couldn't care less if you join our coaching program or not, we're just going to talk. I'm just going to do my best to help you out. If you join us, sweet. We'll go through a qualification process. Hopefully you are good enough to join us. You got it. Like does just because somebody's got the money to pay, like what, what's the saying? Like it takes one bad apple to spoil a bunch. Dude, that is real. That is very, very real. So don't just take anybody, even if they've got a million dollars that they want to roll over into whatever fund. If the, the guy's just like a jerk, there's this is just like a mean, rude person that you don't want anything to do with. It's not worth chasing the cash. That sets a very dangerous precedent. If you use a consultative sales approach, it almost forces you to be non-biased to the people that you're talking with. And a, a byproduct, if they want to join, they'll tell you. And that's where you can decide, okay, do I see more green flags? That this is going to be a good client? Do I see more red flags? This is going to be a bad client. Um, an example, we have, out of all of our clients, there's a couple that are, um, I don't know, rough around the edges, I suppose. Like, we don't kind of vibe too well. And I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, awesome people, great people. Nothing, I mean, it's not like we, like, hate them or anything. But on one hand, one one person, they, they must have had, like, a ton of success in the past. Something happened. And they're just, con they're like chasing that dragon. They're just chasing it over and over and over. But they're approaching everything that they're walking into as if they are the same person and everything, the environment is the same as they were in the past. But it's not, it's completely different. So this person approaches their sales from the perspective of like, I'm the, why would you not, if you don't buy from me, you're an idiot. And that comes off, that turns people off immediately. So, you know, obviously we can't have an ego. Then on the other, so like for us, we're going back and forth, it's like, we're from a, a consultative approach. We're trying to get across the point. Like there's something in your approach that needs to be changed. The process is the same with everybody. How come these people are getting great results? And we're kind of struggling over here. Everything is the same. What do you think the difference is? On the other side, we've, we're, we might 
we're kind of having a conversation about bringing on some other people. Those other people are talking to us in a way where the dynamic is they are paying us. So we work for them. That's not at all how it goes. That will be the deciding factor. If we are like, Hey man, this just isn't going to work out. Not good, bad, right or wrong. It just doesn't fit our business model. Sorry. We don't work for the people that pay us. We work with the people that pay us because knowing isn't doing like if, if you join us sweet, like, dude, we're in it. Like if you come to us, then you're telling us, Hey, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to make this work. And when we're bringing you on, we're saying, Hey, we're not going to let you give up on yourself either. So we're going to go through these hard conversations because we're not going to give up on you. And we're not going to let you give up on you. The people that don't want to pay us, whatever, couldn't care less On to the next conversation. As long as we stay consistent, just move forward. The same mindset, same attitude. The success is inevitable. It's just, we got to hit certain steps every single day. That's it. A consultive sales approach. We have had, man, I guess I'm kind of going off on a rant here, but um, we've had a lot of conversations lately about clients that are, they're getting leads. Totally different conversation. I would, personal opinion, I suppose, a lead is anybody, you have a contact information, that's a lead. Everybody is qualified until they're not qualified. It's kind of like, uh, like you're innocent until proven guilty. You're qualified until proven otherwise. I can't un, I can't disqualify you until I have a conversation with you. You not opening my email does not disqualify you. You not responding to my messages does not disqualify you. So consultative sales approach, consultative sales approach. Um, we've had a lot of conversations. People are, are really struggling with sales. It's not most of the time. It's not like a lead thing. You need a certain amount of people to have like volume to practice your conversations with. But practice without reflection makes bad habits. So if you're not recording your sales calls, if you're not like looking back at your sales calls, man, when I said this, there was a super awkward pause. So I'm not going to say that. Here's all of the questions that this person asked me. So I'm going to answer this. So then when I go into the next call, there's no pause. There's no, uh, oh man, uh, I don't know. And if I write down the question and then I hear it and I have a, a framework in front of me, I can repeat it back to them. The same, seems like you're saying blah, blah, blah. And when I use their exact same words, they're going to say, yeah. And now they're micro agreements. Now they're agreeing. Now I can also answer the question. And because I've repeated back to them exactly what they said in their own words, and they've agreed that, yes, that is what I said. And I, I am admitting that this is my current struggle and problem. Now they're all like their literal brain chemistry, like they're significantly more open to what you have to say next. Now your job, I guess, what do you say next? This is, man, I get real deep, I suppose, way more than I thought. But what you say next needs within that very specific context has to be a clear, concise solution to whatever their question is. If it's not clear, if it's not super, super simple that like a seventh grader could understand it, then instead of their mind immediately saying, oh, that makes sense. They're thinking of other things and just having them think of other things. It's like, it's like a free for all, like, ah, oh, they could just, their mind could go anywhere. We want it controlled kind of like on point. And that's part of the art of like prospecting and sales. People are going to get off script. People are going to get off track. Your job as the expert, the trained advisor, bring them back on track. I would say the best way to approach sales calls is a consultant. I am a doctor. I can help anybody. I know that, but I cannot help you until I know it is wrong. And how can I know what is wrong? That's you know likely where your discovery calls are happening. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll, I'll have all these prompts on a Google Doc for everybody. It'll be inside the school group so that everybody can just copy and paste and use them. But let's go on to another kind of fun one. So content creation. Um, I would, we so some of us just kind of wrapped up a, a content creation, um, like a content challenge. Some people are posting every day for a month. Some people are posting every other day. Some people are posting once a week, uh, every three days, every two weeks, whatever it is. The whole point of that challenge was to stay consistent, develop some sort of consistency. That was it. That was the whole point. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, well, what do I post? So here, and we went through a lot. Here's just another example. I would still say like, this gets pretty, the only reason why I haven't talked about this before is because it can get technical. And if we're not used to posting, we're not used to this process of staying consistent and putting ourselves out there on the internet for everybody else to judge, it is tough. It's no matter what you think, it is tough, especially if you're new to it. Um, the easiest way is to just post things you love. What's a hobby you have? What's a big goal of yours? And how do you make some money? 
that's how people are going. Those are like the four main pillars of how people can get to know you. It's kind of interesting because when you're meeting somebody else, you're getting the answers to those four questions in more than like in several words, I suppose. Like if if we were to take a conversation and just like make a line out of it, we'd be able to see, oh, here is where you basically in four sentences, here's where you ask like, hey, what do you love? Here in two sentences, you ask like, so what's a big goal of yours? You just, you didn't ask specifically. So what's a big goal of yours? You said it differently. So like, what's, what's the deal, man? So like, what are you, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do? Where are you trying to grow to? Like, what's, what's the next step? What are you looking forward to? I want to buy a helicopter so I can fly to the top of a mountain just for lunch with a buddy of mine. That's a big goal. It's a big goal of mine. Literally have a helicopter just to fly to the top of a mountain just for lunch. That's it. You got to be delusional about your goals because nobody else will be. Anyway, um, if you kind of got past that you, and you just want some more, um, I don't know, tactical um, tips and tricks, I suppose, here's what uh, I would probably recommend. Now, in now, this particular schedule requires that you're going live. I would recommend you go live. In fact, we're kind of considering making these coaching calls. We'll just do them live on um, uh, LinkedIn, maybe. Eh, I don't know. Might have maybe we'll just do because I want to keep this like intimate and like you know we're all family like you guys. Maybe I'll do a separate coaching call for like the public I suppose. But anyway, um, anticipation post. So maybe like on LinkedIn or if you have a Facebook group or in a school group maybe or anywhere, you might post and this is like a schedule. So maybe in the morning you say, hey guys, uh, at one one o'clock and six hours from now I'm going to be going live talking about X, Y, and Z. Your anticipation post is basically the commercial to the TV show. If your TV show starts on a Thursday, you might see commercials Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> um, now, then obviously do your live stream, you know, talk about whatever you want. Can You could kind of consider your live streams like a webinar. I mean, these, like what we're doing here, these coaching calls are kind of like webinars, unstructured webinars. So if you're kind of like nervous of doing that, like um, just like out to the public, um, one one really kind of cool way, or I don't know if it's a cool way, but a trick that I use is basically like turn off all of my screens and then put the picture of myself right there front and center. So I'm looking at myself when I'm talking. I'm not really like looking at the comments. I'm not looking at how many people are watching because I don't want to psych myself out because if it's zero, it, it might psych me out like, oh man, nobody cares what I'm like, ah, nobody's watching. And it, it might psych me up because it's like, oh, nobody's watching. I could just say whatever I want right now. Um, now on Tuesday, maybe you post the, uh, the the replay to that live stream. Like, hey, if you missed it, we went over blah, 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 blah. We have a your your videos. We have a, a blog SOP, that three-in-one content blast. I just put that inside the school group. Uh, last week, our last coaching call, we were talking how to turn a short video into a YouTube, um, like, I, you know, obviously like post on YouTube, but here's your YouTube description. Here's an email you're going to write. Here's a blog post you're going to write all off of that one video. So you have the YouTube description template. You've got the email template, like how are you going to write this? Um, and then you have the blog post template as well. So your, your live stream, you could turn your live stream into three pieces of content. Just follow that three-in-one content blast SOP. It's read through it a couple of times. It might seem a little diff complicated at first, but they all um, it all comes together uh, at the end there. Uh, now, Wednesday, memes and engagement posts. Memes are awesome. They use, especially on Facebook, they usually have high, um, not impressions, high reach. Like they reach a lot of people because they're funny. People share them. Ha, ha, ha. The only bad thing, the only bad thing with memes is we don't get a lot of context out of it, depending on what it is. Like we can't, like if I post like a funny picture of a cat or something and a thousand people like it, it's hard to say, oh man, a thousand, like I need to post more cats. It, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's not that it's not, oh, I need to post more cats because my audience loves cats. It's just that particular post brought a lot of engagement to my profile. So we don't get a lot of context clues out of meme. Now, engagement posts are where you're kind of like asking people a question. Like, hey, um, do, do you would, would you prefer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for 12 weeks or group coaching sessions for 12 weeks? Do you like chocolate or vanilla ice cream? And we talk about this all the time in, in prospecting. Like the best way to keep conversations going is acknowledge what somebody said and then ask them a question that has them decide between two things. Because whatever one they decide... They're, they're, they're like playing their flag. Like mm, this, this side is me. This side is not, I do not do that. They're telling us something about them. 
That is good information. We want to know as much as we can about somebody as the doctor so that we can understand how to actually help this person. Um, so yeah, engagement posts really are just kind of like asking questions. Um, it might be like, maybe you use the story framework. Here's a big problem I had. Here are the steps I went to get past it. Here's how I'm better now because of it. Has anybody else struggled with this situation and have a better uh, process? Has anybody else gone through this too? Does, is, it, is anybody else kind of struggling with this? Because I have a tip that'll help you. Just I, I just want to send in a private message or something. Now, Friday is a value post that'll shift beliefs. So value posts, a lot of people, a lot of like, uh, I guess, um, gurus and coaches and stuff gloss over this is so annoying. Uh, they gloss over the value post. Just make a value post. It's like, what? Like, I don't even know what that is. What is a value post? Obviously, it's a post that's bringing value to somebody. Now, the the other part of that is I'm going to give you this piece of value, but I need to, the post has to loop back to me as the expert. So a value post, the best, in my opinion, the best value posts are written from first person experience. Here's a big problem that I had. Here are the steps I used to get past it. Here's how I'm better now because of it. And then if you guys want the tools that I use to help me get better at it, just shoot me a message. Soft call to action. Um, but a lot of these posts like to shift beliefs. Um, like if I tell, if you, if this is your first time like meeting us and being in our world and I say, yeah, man, you need to be sending like a hundred messages a day and you have no experience with cold prospecting to you, that's going to sound impossible. You can't do that unless you're spamming or scamming or doing something illegal. There's no way you can do that. It's impossible. I might, my value post to shift that belief might be, hey, here's how you can chunk it down into just three parts of your day. Maybe at the beginning of the day, you just do send out like 30 messages. Do all of that on LinkedIn. Just go to your current network network list and just send a message to 30 people. And then in the middle of the day, go on to Facebook and send a message to 30 people. And then at the end of the day, maybe send 15 more messages on LinkedIn and 15 more on, on Facebook. I'm not good at math. I don't know if that adds up to 100. Um, but literally just the concept of chunking things down makes it seem so much more approachable. If I say, hey, man, you got to make a million dollars this year, it, it lands different versus, hey, man, you got to make 84 grand this month. That lands different. Hey, man, you got to make 2,500 bucks today. It just hits different. And if it, you, it might be easier for you to think about, OK, how can I make 2,500 bucks today versus, OK, how can I make a million dollars this year? It's a little different. Okay, so your value posts, it should be it should be giving giving value like, oh, dang, like that's a cool trick. I didn't know that. And then shift a belief. Another one, the star method. If you guys aren't familiar with our star method, anybody that responds positively to your offer message on LinkedIn, star that conversation. Because the next day, you want to come back into LinkedIn and see, did they take action? Did whatever that you wanted them to do, did they do it? If not, follow up with them. So the belief is it's really hard to follow up with people on LinkedIn because there's no way to organize the inbox. The value post is, hey, anybody that responds positively, star that message because now you can filter by starred messages. And now you essentially have a list of everybody that you want to follow up with. Perfect. Just go down that list every day. Just send them out. You can copy and paste the same message to every single person. And then you've essentially followed up with everybody. Maybe that's part of your 30 messages or 100 messages a day. Now, how would I bring that back to me as the expert? Oh, well, the only way I figured this out is because I ran into that problem. I had, I found a, a message that had a really high response rate, but I was getting so many responses. I, people were falling through the cracks. Like I didn't know how to organize. I didn't know what to do. I lost a lot of business. I left a lot of opportunity on the table. That's how it's coming back. I'm showing from a first person perspective, here's my experience from just sheer volume. And if I'm coming from a first person perspective, it's really hard to argue with. So oh, I don't believe you. Like, okay, whatever. Like I, and that's why we're really big on transparency. Like I track all of this stuff. I, here's the spreadsheet, here's the screenshot. I'm showing you exactly what I want. But usually it's like, oh man, that's an awesome tip. Dang, I didn't think about that. Oh man, that's, I do the same thing. Great stuff. If I was coming from a, a, a second person, like, hey, you need to do this, okay? You need to send out 100 messages. You need to be starring messages on LinkedIn. You have to be doing this. People are going to argue with that in the comments because inevitably somebody's going to have the opposite experience and they're going to chime in and say, 
you're dumb. That doesn't work. That's stupid. That's inefficient. Here's a better way. We don't want that in the comment section of a value post. So your value post, it could be short, it could be long, it doesn't matter. Well, all I would say is that your, your call to action or whatever you're having people do, whatever the, the value part is, it's clear and actionable. Like it's something that people could go take action on right now. Like you could log into your LinkedIn and click the star message or the star button on any message. You could do that. Like you could go to Amazon. Oh man, I put all my clickers away. You could go, damn, that would have been awesome if I had my clickers right here, but you could go to Amazon and order clickers. As soon as you get your clickers, like send a message, click, send a message, click, send a message, click. Sometimes people are like, ah, how do I know if I sent a hundred messages? Get some clickers. That might be a value post. How did I figure out how to use clickers? Well, I was in the exact same spot as you. I, did, I needed an easier way to track my messages and maintain consistency because I know that if I send 500 messages a week and that equates to however many phone calls and whatever my conversion percent is, okay, I've got real numbers. I need to send out an X amount of messages per day. Easiest, the fastest and most efficient way that I found to do that with clickers, copy and paste scripts and clickers. Send it, click, 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 send it, click. And I'm using clickers to track responses. I mean, you guys have seen my clickers. I've got a blue one for first offer message. I've got a yellow one for first follow-up. I've got a red one for last follow-up. I've got a black one for like a wild card where I'm not tracking that message yet, but I'm going to make sure that that data is not in with all of my other data. That's why it's so important to send the same message over and over and over and over and over. So you can get statistically relevant results from that. And you'll know from a data perspective, that's a good message. There's no way to argue with it. Tyson and I have all the time, we're like, oh man, I can't articulate why. I just don't like the way that sounds. I don't like the way it sounds. I just don't like it. But the beauty of marketing is like, hey man, that's awesome. You don't like it. I love it. Let's let the market decide. Let's get the data. Let's just see if it works. I'm not here to say I'm right and you're wrong, but let's just, if it works, it works. So there's been plenty of things that we've put out that I did not like, but it worked. It converted. Can't deny that. We only got that data from sending it out a statistically relevant amount of times and then to get the data back. So value posts are awesome, but a lot of people get them wrong. It's not a place you just like brag about something. It's I need, I kind of have to tell you a story and then give you a very actionable, a tactical thing that you can do right now. And then tie it back to me as the authority. How did I find this out? So this is a little, and like I said, I'll have all of this inside the uh, Google doc, but this is a little schedule that you can follow here. But now what we do need, what we want, that's going to make this a lot easier is something called a content matrix. Basically think of like a table. On one side, you've got, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Well, well here, I'll, I'll, I'll put the prompt in here for you. And this is what I'm going to put, and we're going to fill out the prompt here together, but this is what I would put, uh, or th this will be on the Google Doc for everybody. So as a content creator for, what do you do and how do you do it? So I'm just going to use, as a content creator for, an insurance agent who specializes in helping people 55 plus retire comfortably with annuities and IULs. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't even explain to you what an annuity is. Couldn't explain to you what an IUL is. I just hear it all the time. So I'm going to use that as an example. Your task is to generate unique and compelling ideas for engaging authoritative content. Please, here's the matrix part. Please create a table with the following rows. So going sideways. Mistakes, myths, objections, belief shifts. Uh, tips, hacks, tricks, lead magnets, live streams, uh, memes, polls, uh, questions that get responses, case study, controversies. I don't even know, whatever. I don't know how to spell that. Now, the columns should be like subject number one, subject number two, subject number three. So we have, there, there's somewhere inside the school group, there is a um, like a challenge of coming up with 15 pieces of content. So what do you do? How do you help people? in one sentence now what are three subcategories of how you help them do that so like if we were to say uh, we help independent insurance agents grow their business with online marketing strategies what are the three pillars one maybe it's like linkedin automations two maybe it's mindset uh belief shift maybe uh three maybe it's um uh like operations and organization 
most people, their business is not really organized. And so there's no like, uh, uh, these are your duties. These are your duties. This is your title. This is what you do. Most independent workers, like you're running your own business, kind of doing everything. Not good, bad, right or wrong, but just that might be a pillar of what we're what we're talking about. So the columns, subject one, subject two, subject three. So we'll delete that. Um, columns should be annuities, IULs, and then just holistic financial planning. It's just something I could, just something to come up with. Um, so for here's some of the magic stuff. Um, for each row on the table, please provide, jeez, I can't spell it all. Please, please provide at least three, or five, so I'm gonna change this to three, just because we're gonna run this prompt, but if we put down five, it's gonna take forever to run this prompt. Um, so three specific ideas that can be used as inspiration for creating high quality content around what is the desired goal, being comfortable, uh, being comfortable in retirement from having annuities, IULs, and holistic planning. Your ideas should avoid common sense concepts and instead focus on original perspectives or insights that will capture the attention of readers. Please note that your response should also be flexible uh, and allow for various relevant and creative content ideas within each category. Um, all right, so let's see how it does. Uh, last time I did this, oh, nice, it's doing it. I was going to say last time I did this prompt, I did it in ChatGPT because I know ChatGPT doesn't really have any issues um, making tables like this. Now, another benefit of having a table, so anytime I ask ChatGPT to give me a list or give me variations or something, um, like, hey, write me one hook that will on whatever. Okay, awesome. Now give me 10 variations from 10 uh, different emotional perspectives in table format so I could copy and paste this onto an Excel sheet. The reason is when it's laid out in a table like this, I don't have to scroll anywhere. I can I can get all the information just in one little kind of spot. So it's easier for me to, I guess, absorb that information. Um, but this is all content stuff. Content ideas, videos, you could do anything you want about this. Uh, five costly annuity mistakes retirees make and how to avoid them. That's pretty good for mistakes. The hidden dangers of DIY annuity investing. Uh, objections, ad ad addressing the top four annuity objections and why you're wrong or why, or yeah, I guess not you, but why they're wrong. Um, belief shifts, rethinking IULs, how this powerful tool can revolutionize your retirement. I might change that one a little bit. Uh, tips, here's 10 holistic retirement planning tips to secure your financial future. Could just be 10 basic things like you as the financial advisor, you're the expert, I guarantee like you can just think of 10, 10 things that like, oh, everybody should know this. To me, it's new information. I don't know this. So it happens to us all the time, like marketing concepts and strategies, like don't ask people why questions online. We know that it's like second nature because we've been talking about it and using it and implementing it for years. To other people that are coming into our program, it's the first time they've ever heard that. So it's like to them, holy fruit, that's amazing. So it's a good reminder for us, like, we need to write that down and tell people and remind them of it because not a lot of people know it. Just because we do, it doesn't mean they do. So we take a lot of things that we know for granted. You might be doing the same thing. It might sound kind of weird for you to just put out a post of like, hey, here's some holistic retirement strategies, proven tactics to achieve your goals. But you know that. Other people might not. It could be like what you think is super, super simple and everybody knows this. They probably don't. Um, IUL hacks, unconventional tactics to supercharge your cash value growth. I would probably change that. It's a little marketing. Uh, lead magnets, the retiree's guide to annuity mastery. You could make an ebook about this. Uh, and actually, I've got an SOP for that and how to write a 60,000 word page book in 90 days or less. Uh, broken down, very, very simple. Like, what do you want to write about? Who do you want to write to? Very simple stuff. And the best way to do it is to open up a like a voice recording app on your phone and talk all of this stuff out. Talk it all out and it'll transcribe. And then you can probably just give an AI like, hey, I need you to take this transcription and put it into like chapters. And like you are right you know, right now, you are acting as a professional ghostwriter that usually writes Hollywood movie scripts. I am going to give you some word vomit and I need you to ghost edit and write and formulate a, a, ta a table of contents, a, a chapter titles and the title of my book. And then put all of this information, like make all of the chapters. You could do that. And you, well, probably I've never done that part, but I do know plenty of people that are Amazon bestsellers and Wall Street or New York Times bestsellers currently still on the list that wrote their books with voice notes. 
So lead magnets, love that. Seven steps, seven, ugh, seven steps to choosing the perfect annuity for your retirement. I'd probably make a video about that. I'd probably make an email about that. I'd probably write some posts about that. I'd probably get an infograph about that. Um, man, okay, I gotta jump right now actually because I think Tyson. Well, let's just see. If I hang up right now, it's because unfortunately, yeah, Ty Tyson 